The beginning of Freddy's nightmare starts with this news reporter dude, and like Freddy's using his like his film video editor powers to like mess with this guy, and then this little shot happens, which is pretty damn cool. Like that's pretty badass. You can't say it's not. Like stripes are cool. And then he like cuts through the damn screen, and it's Freddy Krueger and freaking self, and it's like, hey, it's me, kids. Freddy's nightmares. I got my own TV show now, now, and I can do whatever I want because I'm Freddy Krueger, and I can already do whatever I wanted because I'm a dream demon. And you're like, oh shit. So apparently, Freddy's got his own show, and it's like on TV. And the first episode is the most intense shit ever because it was directed by the guy who directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Poltergeist, Toby Hooper. So it's like, those are two damn good ass movies. And like, let's have him direct the, the little movie where Freddy is in court and they're about to burn his ass up in a boiler room. And we didn't put that in the first movie for some reason, but we can put it in the first episode of the TV show. Ooh, ooh. And everybody is freaking pissed at Freddy because of all the crap he did, but they didn't feel the documents out right so now he gets to walk freddie was in court and they were gonna like send his ass to prison forever but since they didn't sign the paperwork right or read his miranda rights to him then the case gets freaking thrown out and the whole town is freaking pissed and then freddie steps out he's like hey yeah i get to go free and i'm wearing my favorite sweater and the whole the town is just mad upset and he's just like yeah and then it shows this episode shows freddie's point of view and he just like just visions of chaos and calamity and just like it's a intense fucking show like this could have been a movie in itself just how they capture it from a weird like down-to-earth view where it's like there's no crazy special effects or anything it's just living freddie and it's not cool like it's an intense fucking episode it's like low budget but also really effectively dark Five seconds, literally after he gets away with freaking murder due to negligence, Freddy is back on his shit. Literally, he goes right to his boiler room. How does this guy get access to a freaking boiler room? Because I would have lived in there. Like, I bet the rent was mad low there. You know, fuck, in this economy. Anyway, he goes and he gets his precious freaking glove. And he, I, like, I think he, they show that he makes the glove because I was kind of wondering where the hell did he get that glove from? Because he seems to really, really love it and care about it a lot. But he gets it, and he's like, hell yeah. And he's just like, just in love with that freaking glove. And then you finally see, like, normal living Freddy with the glove and the hat and the sweater. And it's really, it's almost scarier than the movies are because it's so real. And you're like, damn, dude, this episode is, is a lot. And, like, it's really well made because TCM, Texas. Freddy's got some nerve. Literally the night he was supposed to go to jail, he gets off. But he's like, I'm going to go after the fucking cop who arrested me and his kids. Because, like, why not? And he's stalking hard. But then the rest of the families from Springwood show up. And he's like, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't do that. And they're like, we're going to get Freddy. His car's right there. He parked right in front of the house. He parks right in front of the house that he's going to. But then he's like, oh, shit, damn, they're right there. I better go. I'm out. Freddy could have just left town, get, considering he got away with murder, but he doesn't. Like, he was going to kill this dude's family, but, like, there, these this mob comes, and they catch his ass, so he runs off. But instead of leaving town then, he goes back to the boiler room. Like, he's just like, I'm just going to go home. I'm just going to go home. And then the entire town mob is parked right in front of his house, and he just goes right in. He's like, fuck it. There's a bunch of people waiting for me. I'm going to go in and talk a bunch of shit to all of them. And the cop that arrested me and all the parents of the victims I killed just talk a bunch of shit right to him. So he's there just talking infinite smack. Just talking that Freddy Krueger smack and everyone's just getting real pissed. Like the whole town, they're just like, can we kill him? Can we kill him? And the one cop's like, we gotta do it by the book. It's gotta be done by the book. And then Freddy's like, I'm gonna kill your kids once I get out of here. And, that, and the cop's like, all right, God damn it, that's enough. This guy finally loses it and he's like, you know what, let's just freaking get rid of this guy. I'm so tired of this guy's shit. So he gets the oil can, oil can. That's from Wizard of Oz. And he just starts splashing Freddy. And Freddy's still talking smack. Just like, he's like, yeah, do it. Go ahead and do it, I don't care. Go ahead and tip me up, I don't care. I'm Freddy Krueger, I don't give a shit about anything. Oh, I got my glove, oh. And then just like, they're like, fine, we, we don't care either. And they set his ass on fire, like, damn. And he's like, that's what I wanted. I wanted to burn up because I have, I have dream demon powers. And they're like, 
what? What is that? Is he a, he had dream demon powers? And they're like, well, we'll deal with that later. So, like, his ass is, is ablaze and a light and just on fire. And they're like, we have to keep this a secret forever. We're a, we're a secret society. We're a, we're a family now. And at some point during the 25 minutes that he's burning alive, he, like, sort of, like, summons these dream demon monster things. And they're like, we'll give you powers if you do our bidding. And it's like, hell, yeah, I'll do your bidding. So they fly into his body and shit, and they give him all types of crazy demon fire powers. And it doesn't work out for anybody for a long time. Any other time, that would be the end of the whole thing right there. Freddy burns up and it's over, but it's not over because now he's got crazy, super awesome dream demon powers and he wants revenge. And he starts getting it with all these cool ass magical tricks and treats for everybody. And the first guy he starts working over is the cop who arrested his ass. They try to go back and get Freddy's body, but it's fucking missing. And they're like, whoa, the body's supposed to be in here and it's not in here. So they go looking for it and it turns out one of the people who was supposed to kill Freddy has been killed in his place. So this is really starting to affect the cop a lot and he's going crazy and his kids are like, Dean, are you okay? And he's like, no, I'm not okay. Freddy's back and we got to get out of here now, now. The guy manages to go completely insane, but he also has a toothache, so he has to go to the dentist. And you think, you think everything's gonna be fine, but then as soon as he looks over and the nurse is in her bra and panties, you pretty much know this guy is a goner because it's like, come on, bro. And it's sad because you think this guy's gonna get away even though Freddy just can do whatever the freak he wants. And he just sort of like, you know, does his magical dream demon shit and shows up right there. And you're like, dude, I thought this guy was going to get away because he actually is the guy who kills Freddy. Like, he actually killed Freddy. So it's just like, who can stop this guy? So there he is. He's just like, this is full form, supernatural demon Freddy's first appearance canon canonically. I don't know if that counts or whatever, but like, there he is. He's happy as shit. He got some super cool powers and now he's going to raise a bunch of hell. And this guy gets freaking killed. Freddy shows up again in episode four, Freddy's Tricks and Treats. And this episode takes place on Halloween and it's really, really scary. Like, I don't know what the hell they were on when they made this episode, but I love it. It's got Mariska Hargitay from Law and Order when she's mad young and she plays like a, like a student of mortuary sciences or some shit. It's in college on Halloween and Freddy is there. She's new to Springwood and she doesn't believe in Freddy. And that just Freddy, makes Freddy just like want to get a piece of that ass. And he like uses psychological terror and just all this crazy shit to just mess with this girl on Halloween. And it's gnarly. Basically this chick here is like deathly afraid of her grandmother because her grandmother used to like punish her and like beat her ass and stuff and that's not cool and burn her hands with hot water and that's also not cool and like she's like trying to like study and like be a good student but she's still like it's Halloween you know and it's Springwood so like like fucking Freddy's messing with everybody whenever they fall asleep and take a nap while they're studying and, it's, and she's just going Freddy is driving this chick absolutely in Insane. Like he could just wait until she falls asleep and just kill her, but he's like, no, I'm gonna freak her the freak out. And that episode is just her, him like messing with this chick for like hours and hours on Halloween. And it's just gnarly scary. You're like, I didn't, it's just, it's low budget, but it's also really, really brutal. This part was pretty damn savage. Like the chick has the dream that her grandma dies in front of her again, but she's like, this time I'm gonna save you, grandma. This time I can save you because I know CPR and I'm gonna save you, grandma, and everything's gonna be okay. And the grandma like rises up and he's like, it'll be okay, oh shit. And she's, and you're like, the grandma's still alive or whatever. And then like the face is like bleeding and you're like, oh shit. And it's freaking Freddy. It's freaking Freddy, you're like, damn, dude, like, I don't remember him going this hard in the damn movies, like, he was a lot goofier in the movies, but in the show, he's doing straight up psychological terror, it's like, oh, what are you afraid of, because I'm gonna go and make that the fucking reality, and it's just, and it gets worse from there. Also, the chick had this boyfriend who I thought was annoying and I didn't mention him at all this whole time because he sort of was just sort of just there to be like, I'm here to be your best friend and help you and love you and all that. 
And she's like, you're my only friend, boyfriend, but he's not even fucking real. He's a goddamn figment of her imagination because she's lost her shit. And it's real sad. Like, the Freddy shit's one thing, the grandma shit's another thing, but then when the boyfriend's not real, you're like, this episode is a lot. And Freddy's just there just like, that's fucking sad. He doesn't even do it. He doesn't even have to do anything. He's just sitting there just like, damn, you're fucked up. You know, he's like, fuck, I'm just going to let you go. Just, just get out of here. And he just fucking leaves. It's awesome. It's a great episode. And it's not even over. This chick is having a full-blown nervous breakdown on Halloween. And these two D-bags are like, we should study her brain, her psychological terrors, and her dreams. And we can write a paper about this, and we'll, be, we'll get tenure for sure. So they proceed to study this chick's brain and dreams. But mostly it's her undressing in her dreams and her mind. And they're just watching it like, damn, bro. Damn. Look at Mariska Hargit say, ow, ow. And they're like, yeah, so we wanted to study our dreams, but mostly we can stare at that body. Ooh, wee. So that's what they do. And uh, they're like, yeah, we'll get something out of this eventually, but also, damn. So these guys are assholes, and I wonder what's going to happen to them. They actually take this chick back to Freddy's boiler room from episode one. And they, they're just like, yeah, we'll just take you here, and you can go back to sleep here. And uh, she'll definitely dream about Freddy there. So then she dreams about some of the stuff that's happened and like, she starts seeing crazy Freddy-esque stuff because she's asleep in the damn base, Freddy's base. And the two guys are like, we need to study these dreams. Like we get a lot of money from all this. And they're just, it's just capitalism, man. That shit sucks. So Freddy comes and this is a dream and the two dudes are really, really trying to just get her to keep going against Freddy in dreams and record it. This guy has a dream recording machine, but Freddy messes with it and it's this, T old ass TV and she's sleeping under blankets and shit and the guy's like I needed to get her to do it again again somehow and you're like bro will you calm down like chill like you have a dream machine why don't you, you just use it to record people not getting killed by Freddy maybe it feels like this chick's been chased by Freddy for like months and months and months and it's like dude Freddy what are you doing just like just, just just kill her if you're gonna do it. Just don't just mess with her for that shit drives people crazy. But it turns out it's a dream because this dude is studying the dream still and he's just like, You gotta stay in there with Freddy. I gotta get video off Freddy or some shit. And she's like, Oh crap and he ends up pulling she ends up pulling him into her dream and then it becomes his dream and then Freddy's like, Yeah oh so then he ends up grabbing the dude who's trying to study her ass to death. And like Freddy's like, yeah, this is the good I really wanted because he's gonna learn all the secrets of dream shit, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna kill him and eat his ass, and you can just leave. And she's like, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. So she like wills herself out of a dream because she's mastered. Look at that shit. She's like, ooh, ooh, and then she wakes up. And thank God. So somehow, somehow the chick pulls the, the douchebag dude who was studying the dreams into her dream and then Freddy gets him and everything is okay. And like that episode was honestly really weird. It starts off really, really dark and intense with the ghostly dead boyfriend. And then it becomes about science and technology and like asshole capitalists and how like if anything, if they ever found a way to deal with Freddy, they would just record videos of him on people's dreams. And then the ending has this badass sequence where a bunch of blood pours out of a VCR and then Freddy's there just chilling. He's just like, oh man, I had a great time. And I'm like, yeah, cool. So yeah, Freddy's Nightmares, it's on TV. Happy Halloween. And that's it. He son of a bitch. Suck my holy flappy folds. Pick my flappy foldy holes.